Hello, I'm Pat O'Hare, Chief Market Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Tuesday, February 10th. The moment we had all been waiting for came upon us in a surprisingly anticlimactic manner. Treasury Secretary Geithner unveiled the Obama administration's plan of attack for promoting a recovery in the financial sector. The market's initial take and Briefing.com's take is that the plan was strikingly short on important details and added to the feeling of uncertainty as to how this crisis will be managed and, more importantly, solved. There was a lot of hoopla leading up to the speech and, frankly, it did not deliver. The plan, as described by Geithner, has four new programs. One, a requirement that banking institutions go through a carefully designed comprehensive stress test that will ensure they have cleaner, stronger balance sheets. Two, the establishment of a public-private investment fund that will provide government capital and government financing to help leverage private capital to help get private markets working again. Three, working jointly with the Federal Reserve to commit up to $1 trillion to support a consumer and business lending initiative. This lending program will be built on the Fed's term asset-backed securities loan facility, otherwise known as TALF, that is geared toward improving liquidity in secondary lending markets. And fourth, launching a comprehensive housing program. Perhaps the most important element for the market was how Geithner was going to deal with toxic assets on banks' balance sheet. On that score, Geithner indicated the Treasury is still exploring a range of different structures for this program and will seek input from market participants and the public as it is designed. We were somewhat taken aback that there still is not a plan. The lack of one at this juncture underscores the complexity of the matter and simply creates an impression that Geithner is unsure of the solution. That may ultimately prove to be incorrect, but at this stage of the game, the market wants solutions, not more uncertainty about the path that could be taken. Suggesting the plan is still in a design phase that will be driven by feedback from various sources creates an uneasy feeling for market participants that they will have to continue to deal with on-the-fly adjustments that plagued the last administration and acted as a disincentive for investing. It also would have been nice to hear a specific plan for how the housing situation will be corrected. All that was heard was that details of a comprehensive plan will be forthcoming in the next few weeks. Again, more uncertainty. Based on what was heard today, the increased commitment to the TALF program is the most constructive initiative in our estimation. There is some meat behind it with the commitment of up to $1 trillion versus $200 billion before to help bolster lending in the distressed small business, student loan, consumer and auto finance, and commercial mortgage loan markets. As to be expected, the Treasury Secretary pledged there would be better and increased oversight of the financial system to guard against any such financial crisis in the future and that there would be greater transparency and accountability in the government's handling of the recovery efforts. Notably, Geithner stressed the strategy for repairing the financial system will cost money, involve risk, and take time. No specificity was provided with respect to any of those items. One thing that is known for sure is that there is a new name for the recovery program. You can put TARP in the vault. Henceforth, this recovery effort will be known as the Financial Stability Plan. Geithner conceded, quote, we will have to adapt our program as conditions change. We will have to try things we've never tried before. We will make mistakes. We will go through periods in which things get worse and progress is uneven or interrupted, end quote. If we didn't know any better, we would have thought former Treasury Secretary Paulson was giving this speech. Alas, it was Geithner, but the similarities in that disclaimer are a clear reminder that this is a deep-seated problem that won't have a quick fix. I'm Pat O'Hare for Briefing.com. Thanks for listening.